Hi there, thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. I'm Susan McCord. The topic today is, why do I always ignore the big red flags in new relationships? Well, I think this is a great question because so many people won't even admit or own up to the fact that they do this. They just let things go and they keep ending up in these sort of patterned relationships that don't work out. And a lot of the times it's because they're letting some big things go that shouldn't be let go. Because when you meet somebody and you are giving a big part of yourself to them and you're not getting everything back that you want, you're allowing this person to come in and just sort of take over the relationship. You want to pay attention to red flags. It's so important. In it, I've always thought that it's actually better sometimes to be alone and be happy with who you are than to be in a situation where you're the one that's always compromising. You're the one that has to just be accepting of everything because you're tired of being single. You don't want to be alone. And you just say to yourself, well, it's not such a big deal. They're not that bad. The red flags are okay. I can live with them. But you shouldn't have to live with things that are sort of human etiquette and it's not being met. Because you want to have somebody that appreciates you. You want to have a reciprocated respect with whoever you end up in a partnership with. So to clarify, red flags are more than just a little annoyance in a relationship. Because we all have that. Nobody goes through a relationship without having some situation that maybe bugs them here and there. But the bigger red flags are things like when you meet them and say they don't want children, they don't want to get married, they're still living with their, their ex, as they call them, but they haven't moved out yet. They're looking for a place or waiting for something to happen with money. All of these sort of scenarios are not a good place to let yourself be because what happens is they become very long term, like with what's going on. You're not getting um, what you deserve from this person because they've got all these sort of rules and regulations and things that they're following in their life. And you're the ones that are sitting on the bench wondering when the hell everything's going to be smooth. But they do nice little things to keep you there. This happens a fair bit as well. They, they've just learned how to sort of hold on to you and be able to do all the other things that they want to do. If somebody tells you something, like, we'll use the married one in, the, in the, the child situation, and you think you can change their mind down the road. So you, you're patient, you sit back and you go, well, you know, they'll change their mind. Don't ever go into a relationship thinking that somebody's going to change their mind about a really important topics like this. Because those are important to you if you want to have children and get married. You can't sit there and spend five years trying to get somebody to, to trying to change somebody's mind. That's not your place to do that. And even if they were to do that, the odds are pretty low because that was one of the first things they told you. So it's probably pretty important to them that they don't want these things in their life. So going in and holding on, being the nice person and just waiting for them to, to change that, that situation, you could be sitting there for many years and you might be wasting valuable time when you could be meeting somebody to have children and have a family situation with. So it's really important to listen early on those first few dates and really hear what they're saying. If it's not there, don't sit around waiting for it. So many people do this because they really think, oh, it will just work out, it'll be fine. A lot of these red flags never work out and the reason they're there waving at you is to get your attention. So in answer to the question here, why are you doing it? It's mainly because you just don't want to be alone. You want to be in a relationship and you'll take the dregs of some situations and that's not good. You're worth more and it's better to date less people and have the right people in your life than to date people just to say that you're in a relationship. And, a, and a, a lot of men and women get caught in this trap and it's really hard to get out of because it's easier sometimes people think 
being with somebody in that type of situation than it is always being by himself. And that's not, that's not a healthy way to live because you're squashing your self-esteem and your self-worth and everything to be with somebody who's not really putting you on the priority list here. So please be aware of any red flags, even the small ones. Again, pick your battles with, you know, we all are going to have something with people that we date. It's not going to be 100% perfect. But when it's when it's good, you, you know it. There's not a lot of, you know, that much compromising. You're really on equal footing in a lot of areas. And it just kind of fits. So thanks for listening to Dear Cyber Sue today. Please, if you have any comments or any questions on show topics you'd like me to do, leave them down here in the comment section. Please subscribe to Dear Cyber Sue and click like too. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.